Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Voice leading is something that I usually tell people not to get too much involved with because if they start thinking like this when they're comping, then usually they're sort of taking away their attention from the music and they're thinking about the voicings only, not really about uh, what they have to do when they're comping. But at the same time, voice leading is actually something that's really interesting to explore. I think you probably just shouldn't try and explore it real time when you're playing. It's something you probably want to mess around with when you're trying to practice or come up with some new voicings. And there it's a really great tool for just coming up with a lot of different sounds and just starting with a chord you know and then turning it into something that you've never played before just because you're looking at all the individual voices. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting scales or arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The idea behind voice leading, because I think I just want to talk about sort of the basic idea and what we're already using, is that it's a way to look at the voices within a chord, so really just each individual note, and then find the easiest or the smoothest way to the next chord. So the basic example that you probably already know, then if we have a 2-5-1 in the key of C major, uh, just with shell voicings, like this, so D minor 7, and then G7. So of course, in this case, I'm playing the root as well, and the bass needs to move in the way that it does in terms of just following the bass melody and the, the root of the chord. But when it comes to the other part of the chord here, then we first have on the D minor C and F, so C, F, and that's moving uh, to G7. We can do that by keeping the F and moving the C down to a B. So, and we can move from G7 here to C major 7 by just changing the, the F to an E, like this. So in that way we have a really simple, natural sounding way of flowing from one chord to the next. But sometimes you can choose some other ways of do working with this and that can give you some really great options. And those are some of the examples that I'm going to cover in this video. In this first example, I'm trying to go in the opposite direction of what we normally do when we are voice leading uh, from the D minor to the G7. So usually we have the C, so the seventh of the D minor moving down to a B on the G7, so the third of the G7. But now, in this example, I'm starting with this D minor 11, and the C is not moving down to a B, it's moving up to a flat 5 to a D flat. So I get this. So that means that I have this D minor 11, which is really just the F major triad, so basically a D minor 7 with an added 11 on top here. Then on the G7, I'm having the C move up to a D flat, and the A moving down to an a flat, and I have this voicing, which is basically a D flat major triad with a G on top of it. So it's not a complete uh, G7 because I'm I don't have a third in there. I have a flat five instead. And then the way I'm resolving this is also just if you look at the different voices, the F moves down to E, the A flat moves up to the A, the D flat up to D, and then I have this. C, 6, 9. In this example, I'm going the opposite way of what we normally do when I'm resolving the G7 to the C major 7. And I'm using that to introduce uh, a sharp 11 on the C major 7. So normally when I move from G7, so I would have the F moving down to E. But here I'm having the F move up to an F sharp, so I get that sharp 11 on the C major 7. So first we have this D minor 7 with an 11 and a 9, then G7, flat 9, flat 13. So fairly common drop two voicings. And now, normally you would have the F move down to the E here, but what I'm doing is I'm moving it up to an F sharp. The B I'm just keeping in place because that's the major 7. My flat 13 is moving up to a third, so an E, and the flat 9 it's moving up to a 6 or a 13, that's an A, and then we have this C major 7 with a sharp 11 and a 13. Once you start thinking in separate voices and not in complete chords, that also means that you have some freedom to actually create some things that are in between two different chords. 
and that's what I'm using here. So the first part of this is just again the 251 in C major and uh, fairly simple. It's a very nice way of having some some uh, country movements. So I'm starting with this D minor seven with a nine and eleven, and then the way it's going to G seven is really the way that you would normally voice lead. So the G goes to the flat nine, the A flat. E goes down to the flat 13, the E flat, and the C goes down to the B. And then we have this G7 with a oh, flat 9 and a flat 13. And then the way I'm resolving this, I'm choosing to not resolve all the notes at once. So I'm resolving the F down to the E and the E flat down to the D, but I'm just leaving the A flat there in the beginning. So I have this, which is like a C major 7 with a sharp 5. And then resolving that to just a regular C major 7 with a 9. Here I'm using voice leading to connect different types of chord and I'm sort of getting out of just using the drop 2 voicings all the time because of course it's nice to know your drop 2 voicings but it's also just nice to be able to connect them with other chords. So I'm starting with a drop 2 voicing for the D minor, that's this D minor 9. And then instead of going to, normally you would expect this to go to maybe this type of G7, but um, instead going to a G7 that's, the C is going up to the D flat, so I have flat five, I'm keeping the F in place, adding a B here, and then having an E flat on top. So I have a G7 with a flat five and a flat 13. And if you look at this voicing, then in fact, it's the same as, this D flat 7 with a 9, but just played an octave higher. And of course it works better an octave higher if it's supposed to be a lot of extensions and alterations on a G7 altered. And then I'm resolving this to this really basic C major 7, which is also just a drop 2 voicing. So in this way, by not thinking about just complete chords all the time, but really thinking about independent voices, you can leave some voices unchanged as a sort of suspension and then resolve them later when you're resolving to the chord along the way and create some movement in that way. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for that and if you want to help me keep making videos then you can check out my Patreon page. If you join us over there I can also give you something in return for your support. Once you start experimenting with voice leading, you're probably also gonna find yourself coming up with complete new voicings that you never played before. Uh, this next example is actually like that because in preparing this uh, video, then I started with this D minor seven, which is a really basic D minor seven uh, dot two voicing on the top string set. And then I'm sort of voice leading that. I wanted to play a G seven, with some other extensions. And really the way I did it was I said, well, the A, I want to have down to A flat. The D, I'm going to take up to an F. The F here, I'm going to move up to a G. And then the C, I'm going to go move up to a, to a D flat, which is of course similar to one of the first examples. And then I have this G7, which is pretty dissonant because we have the tritone here, but it's nice in, for a dissonance because it's not, when we have the tritone on top of a voicing on a, on a dominant, then having it sort of with, with the third and the seventh is usually not that nice, but here it kind of works well with the colors on the chord. And then we have the flat nine under it and the seven here in the middle. And then the way I'm resolving this is to this C6 nine voicing, which is, you could also look at this as being sort of an A minor 11 voicing. If you want to check out some more types of voicings that you can use and that you can also experiment with voice leading, then check out this video where I'm going over nine different types of voicings that are fairly common in jazz and that you probably want to have in your vocabulary. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And that's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next week.